won't even last a bloody month. But we have other sources of income that seem to be stable, so we'll be okay. But if our income was completely shut off and the government turns around, they give you $10,000, we are so toast. I mean, the thing is, because we'll be burning 5000 a month, and you can only do that for so long. Um, so this is a good topic for Dr. Yu uh, is joining us. Hey, uh, Dr. Dr. Yu doesn't, ha doesn't have any overhead. He doesn't have any overhead, <laughs> right? He's a doctor. They, they don't have any overhead, right? <laughs> oh, my God. You know? He doesn't have to, to, to make payroll or rent or uh, have to buy equipment or do anything like that. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Of course, it, they have it. Just, fact, just give me some chickens. Welcome, give doctor. Some chickens, I'll give you treatment. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> right. the yeah. Like the uh, old country doctors. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Yu, we're going to have Dr. Bob Arnault, who used to be the the NBC correspondent, um, medical correspondent for NBC News, on tomorrow. So he'll nice. be our uh, special nice. guest. Nice. This, this way you can beam him with a lot of questions. We're also going to have Dr. David Mo Moskowitz, who runs a one of these um, weird, you know, G immunology, I don't know, some some medical deal. Okay, I don't know what the guy does, but we'll find out tomorrow. So they're both going to be on tomorrow. Well, and, yesterday uh, I finally got around to applying for my payroll protection plan loan. The BBP, baby, yep. And it took me literally all day to figure out the stupid application. And I, I bank with Chase. It's the biggest bank in the world. And, you know, I got one of their so, I got their cards here too. Go find my Chase card. It was so complex, and all I got was error messages, and you know I got all the information from my CPA, and finally by the end of the day, I was able to kind of jimmy rig it to work. Um, so yeah, they certainly don't make it easy, and. No, you know, and there's an error in the application where the phone number is. It won't let you put the phone number, so it'll decline it and decline it and decline it over your phone number. Because well, what it, happens it, is, uh, it adds an extra yeah, digit. A, a lot of business owners, they're just going to give up, you know, because they make it so frustrating. It, I mean, and they don't I, answer the phone, of course. No. Nope. So, well, there's yeah. too many calls. There's there's two two hundred seventy five thousand yesterday. One in one day. One my day. Uh, my web geek, who does all my programming, um, he was denied. He has his own little business because uh, he has a bad credit rating. And I'm like, who has a good credit score? I mean, if you're not above six forty, you know, you're toes. You're not going to get it. And I think but that's most, not part of the policy either. That's not part of the policy. Oh, so you know, uh, so I think now we're talking true. about that's the very first thing talking about the good antibodies. So who has the good antibodies? That that should be the question. Yeah, um, as far as I know, I heard your credit score has to be at least six forty. Right. That's, that's not, not the policy. Uh, see, yeah. See, that's, we're going to yeah. do a follow up. It shouldn't. Uh, it shouldn't be. It well, that's going to put a lot of businesses out of business. But I mean, here's the deal. Right. Even if you do get two months of operating expenses, that's not going to save you. Because yeah. even if you get this loan yeah. and your business is still on lockdown, I mean, your employees are going to be sitting around doing nothing. The whole point is, is to open up your business to get production going. And with the two months of operating expenses, you can continue. So after that dries up, if you don't have any business income, you know, that loan is for nothing, you know. So yeah, but, yeah. But the, the, the Payment Protection Act is actually payment protection program is actually eight weeks of payroll that they're going to pick up for you. So that that is actually a pretty good program. Yeah, but my point is what happens after that eight weeks? Oh, if you're so you have no, Yeah, if you have no <laughs> business income. See, yeah, that's you're, the, you're, yeah, it uh, should do, be like do, a do, six do, month do. loan. You know? that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. You know, the thing is, we don't know how long this horizon is going to exactly. be. Exactly. Yeah. Know, the horizon gets that long, businesses are going to be out of business. So we had. Senator yeah, like, like for us. Um, yeah. I went. I went back to the clinic Tuesday. We opened up after three weeks of shutdown, and right. majority of patients are afraid to come in. Of course. So yeah. even if you do open. 
you know, if you don't have any business after two months, what are you going to do? That two months loan is yeah. not enough. It should be yeah. six months. Yeah, yep. I mean, the thing, yeah, because I mean that, and that is the realistic time frame. Because the thing is, um, uh, you know, we're looking at probably January of next year. Although um, there are a lot of developments and treatments and vaccines that are out there, there's now over a hundred of them that are floating through the system. But still, you know, the businesses have to survive till probably January of next year. However, here's what uh, the, the senators have said, and it may happen as early as. This. This week, because remember, Doctor Yu, this is the first time I've seen where Congress passed a bill that allows small business and individuals to get anything. Usually, they give nothing to the small businesses, or they give you little trinkets. Okay, here's your little trinket. Out the door you go. Yeah, here's they a throw you a bone once they in a while. Bone, you know? they throw a bone. There's yeah. no question. They throw <laughs> a bone, and then the large companies. I got back here in the tarp act. 700 billion went to large companies. You know what happened to small individuals? Well, we'll give you 15 cents or you get a dollar. I mean, they give you nothing. A $250 rebate, they gave you nothing. And that's typical what happens here, as you know. This is the first time I've seen where they're open the spigot for small businesses and individuals. First time yeah, I've ever seen it. Okay, but, the, but I haven't met one business owner. I haven't either. Who got a penny? And you know that ten thousand dollar emergency disaster relief fund? I don't know anybody who got that either. I don't yeah, but, either. But, yeah, so. I think, okay. Okay. Okay, wait, wait. Can, can I can I share screen here, uh, Kim? Yes, I'm gonna, you I'm may. Share, I'm going to show you guys something in just a minute. Sorry, go ahead. Right. You, you, It'll be a minute. You I just got to get it. Information to share. So go all ahead. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I, I see. Not not that I. We float. gave this class yesterday. Nick gave this class. Uh, I know, I know, and of course we got. Um, and we yeah. actually piped the class into our show yesterday, and Max was very, you know, dead on. He said, "Give it eight days," but there are a lot of people getting denied for what you're talking about. But the policy did not say you had to have a good credit score. It did not say that you had to have 10 employees or that you only get a thousand dollars per employee. Yeah. But all of these banks are making up these rules or these senators are making up these new rules that did not exist in the original stimulus bill, which was 890 pages, which I read some of them and Nick has, and his team have read them. So, these policies don't exist. So we're going to have to come back and fight them. But, you know, it's just, we're going to have to fight them. But you're right. Well, uh, it's only going to make the matter worse because it's only going to keep you for a month. You know, the $2,000 would only pay my employees one week. You know, Nick, well, it would if you're honestly, if your business is already in trouble because you've been inoperable for two weeks, you know, there's more systemic errors. There's more things you have to do with your business. It's kind of like a wake up call. Oh, you, you really should have six months to one years of operating expensive emergency funds. And if you've been, if you've been operating your business paycheck to paycheck, we got six months of operating expenses. We're good, but average business owner, they never learn that. Even your personal expenses, Dave Ramsey teaches, you need six months of a rainy day fund. And most Americans don't. They live paycheck to pay. It's a, it's a wake-up call. You better not overspend. Live, live, live within your means, in your business, and your personal expenses. So I think there's a, a good thing about this. It's making Americans saying, hey... You know, we're the land of, oh, use your credit card, you know, of getting in debt, you know, buy whatever you want. No, you got to put money, 10% of your income in a rainy day fund for but, your business and your personal expenses. And that's what we should be working on now. Money yeah. and, you're, and you're getting loans. They want to know that you've allocated that money, not to your savings, but that you've allocated that money. Exactly. To you have to use it on payroll, utilities, rent, and business mortgage. And you have to document it. And if you do, supposedly it's a forgivable loan, which means it's like a grant. You don't have to pay it back. But you need to have bulletproof documentation that you're using it for those three expenses. So you and really I'm, have to work with your CPA. And well, the businesses that don't have good record keeping, oh, this yeah. is going to call them out. So, yeah. 
So this this is, um, you know, the big issue right now. And I'm, I'm glad that you're bringing up some of the concerns of the small businesses, because, you know, like Nick and I said, this was the first stimulus ever designed to go bottom up that they actually wrote in the stimulus for small businesses. Uber, the CEO or CTO, one of the, maybe it's the CFO of Uber, called the president's office and said, hey, while you're doing this stimulus bill, think about the, the what we call gig workers, the drivers of Uber. They need money too, because they're not driving like they you know normally would. So they literally set aside money just specifically for um, Uber drivers as well as gig people, but they did, um, so yeah, I don't there's a there's a separate for independent contractors, 1099 employees, workers. They could apply starting April 10th for some type of payroll protection for that category. But that doesn't help me no. or the business owner who gives work to 1099 workers because I can't claim them on the payroll protection. No. So it's a catch 22. It, yeah. it is, it is, but you know, maybe it, you know, it's meant to really give you money to put back into circulation because they want you to spend it. So when you get it, you're told to spend it, not save it, not sit on it. You are told to, to pay your payroll, pay your rent, like you said. So it's truly about just getting money back into circulation. This is not about sustaining you, really. It's not like you said, it, the, the amount that they give you doesn't hold you over. You know, most of it's, you know, for a business like your, yours or Nick's or, or even mine, one of mine, it's, it's only going to keep it one week. And, and that's it. Yeah. You're done. And that's why um, I'm offering some consulting or I coach other type of doctors or healthcare professionals how to get out of like an insurance based practice, which is overworked and underpaid. Because it's like pulling teeth, getting reimbursement from insurance companies, Medicare, PPOs, HMOs, private insurance. And I teach them how to make a, a, a low stress, profitable concierge practice based on cash for fee service. That way the doctor gets paid what they're worth. They can deliver high quality care. They're not spending their time fighting insurance. The patient's care is not limited to what their policy covers, and it's a win-win situation for everybody. But yeah, I mean, if you're a doctor and you want to learn how to, you know, do a practice right, then you know I, I can help them doctors, do that. Yeah, I had several doctors leave the Duke Duke practices because you know it's all insurance based to go open their own private practices, just like what you're talking about. One of my conversations with them, I'm such a, a geek when it comes to certain things, you know, instead of asking the doctor, will I live tomorrow? I go, how much, you know, because of all this insurance, how much do you really get? Because most of the time my insurance company's denying um, payment for my treatments and, you know, but how much do you actually get? And one of my doctors told me that he only got $10 per every visit. That's it. If that, okay. yeah. It's yeah. Like, oh my gosh. And then you got to put that towards your business. You got to pay your nurses, your admin. And he told me that he actually lost money uh, because of the insurance companies and that the insurance companies, he fights them as well to get money for everything. And so, they, they change the codes every year. Yeah. yeah. It's like a puzzle. It's a company. game. You got to learn the coding. You outsource it to a billing company. They take 7%. And there's just no, oh. and after Uncle Sam takes his forty percent, you have nothing left at the end of the day. And then, yeah. and then you, you work, to hire and you work. to do that for you. You have to hire extra hey, men. The real stimulus payroll protection. Here's what they should do: no state or federal good. income tax for this year, and that's like a forty percent increase in your income. You know, just by not paying I agree. your taxes. I agree. And then, then they don't have to write you a check. You're just not writing them a check. You already have your disaster relief right there. Yeah. I agree with that. And I brought that up yesterday. I agree. <laughs> no taxes for uh, the year. And then the big companies could survive. Uh, well, true. the but airline industry, so, they're, they're being bailed out. out. Be able to you know, I, I don't yeah. think it's. I just think yeah. It's a good. All these big companies are going to be bailed. The banks are being bailed out. Where's my turn? Well, they deserve to go out of business and start over. They should, you know. Insurance needs to go out of business and start over. Health insurance yeah. is sucks. 
It, the whole system is bad. Excuse my language. But, um, you know, and Nick, I think, wanted to share um, a, a page with you about our class that we had yesterday to show uh, some of the things that people need to be aware of. Um, but, you know, this is what Dr. Yu, uh, what I was talking about before you came on is, you know, we've been having this talk about all of this. And I feel sorry for our friends from other countries. And they don't have this problem. They, they're all look, they're all happy and thinking about their work. They're not worried about whether they're going to sustain tomorrow because their government is taking care of them. In Australia, they've already received three stimuluses. There's no written uh, uh, anything. Just, you know, here's something to help you get by. Um, you know, some of them, it's not helping a lot, but it's, it's something is better than nothing. And there's no, no um, under underlying written. Everybody gets it. And, um, you know, so what, what I've same thing. So what I've done, Lee, navigated the payroll protection program as a medical healthcare provider. If you're in that industry, um, you can go to my website and uh, I can I can help you navigate that prox progress, and I can help clinics convert from insurance to a concierge cash model. But the website is a. Uh, www.theconciergeclinic.com. Can you so spell the, that out? Yeah, it's complex. So www.theconciergeclinic.com. And then you can apply for, I could give you some free consulting on that. So I want to help uh, other doctors survive this you know, this COVID pandemic situation. Because the more doctors there, the more Americans get more healthy, boost their immune system, we can get out of this. So, Well, and the thing is, is people don't understand that doctors don't get paid very well anymore under the current insurance plan. And personally, I'd rather have a happy, well-paid doctor than a happy, well-paid insurance man. So well, think about it. Um, even if network or hospital or group, look, we talked about this. It's managed by some some MBA has he, he's it's not studied healthcare medicine at all. Hasn't touched the patient, calling the shots. Uh, most most hospital executives get bonuses out of poor patient healthcare uh, outcomes because that keeps in the hospital longer. It's more profitable. It's it's sad. So we should have the doctors actually be the CEOs of these healthcare companies and hospitals because they know what the patients go through and what the doctors go through. When I think you, so I think there should be a reset. Right. Yeah. Look, we we've do. proven we need to re our healthcare system is it, it's incompetent. Yeah. It's not ready to but handle just these proved. disasters. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. failed medical system. I mean, I'm looking at it, they're not working. worried about whether they can pay their medical bill. Well, well, well see, see Dr. Yu, see, here's what got me. The minute this crisis came down, who was handling it for the United States? Politicians. They're yeah. really in a, in a position to understand. I'm sorry, but Fauci, Fauci is not a real doctor. I don't, I don't know if he's ever seen a real patient. You know, because look how he's handling it. Just last week, he's saying, Oh, now I think you should wear a mask. It's like that should have been from day one. I mean, come one. on, you know. I, I totally, like, yeah. I totally. And now get it's it. like, oh, we don't have any effective testing kit methods. <laughs> are you kidding me? You're the CDC, twenty thousand employees. What have you guys been doing? What have you guys been doing all this time? They got to watch the movie Outbreak oh. with Dustin Hoffman. I mean, or, come or, on. Or, or, yeah, or, yeah, that's what's that the first day of this did, outbreak. Did, did they ever listen to Bill, <laughs> Bill Gates' video five years ago? I mean, yeah, he, really. he, put, he put a whole video. And, and Bill Gates does not have a medical background whatsoever. But he's not a stupid guy either. And so he puts together well, this whole He video. did a whole simulation I know that. like two months ago. Yeah. And it was a conference, and they, they, they did a mock situation. What would happen right. if we had a pandemic with a coronavirus? And right. they didn't listen, so yeah. They don't listen to Bill Gates. They, no, they, they didn't pay attention to that, did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we totally ignored this guy. Why no. have the, the research and why have those emergency doctors? And, and here's my question. We had a, a, apparently a pandemic emergency team that we fired. Where Mr. are they now? Why don't we rehire them? Where was are they? It in 2018. So the thing is, this whole thing was like shelved in 2018. It was ignored. And and, then, and again, there's a, um, like, well, like what you said, when, when the minute I saw, well, who's running this operation? And I wanted to see a board of directors of people that were pathologists, immunologists, internists on the board sitting uh, with the president. Okay. Instead, I saw, I hate to say it, Mike Pence. Okay. You know, I'm going, oh, that's I, I got something to add here. They got they to hire, they gotta hire uh, Dustin Hoffman. They might as well yeah, hire yeah. Dustin Hoffman way, to put the hazmat nothing, suit on and, and have, have him wrong. say, it's airborne. Which it is. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, gonna, oh, yeah. I'm gonna bring up two two current um, things. One, I I heard that uh, Giuliani was appointed the science advisor to Trump's staff. I don't know how true that he is. Has no but he has no background in that, but he did invest two million dollars in the Novartis stock in February. So a so, and yeah. Novartis, we know, you know. We they invest in a lot of guess what? Yeah, you know, cellular therapies. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. stem cell well, therapies for cancer called CAR T. Yeah, well, and well, now well. this vaccine for COVID. Right. But you don't hear this about them in the media. You don't no. hear that there's a company called oh, Cellularity. Oh, but, 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 they got but, rapid but, approval for stem cell but see, uh, the thing natural is, killer cell therapy for COVID, but you okay. don't hear about that. Yeah, but doctor, you, you're not gonna hear that from the mainstream media for this reason. Uh, in two minutes, we've got to run our pharmaceutical commercial from- Yeah, uh, basically, yeah. Yeah. In yeah. other words- We can talk about it here all day long. Here's, 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 we we're can talk not. about it here all day long because we're, we're not backed by the pharmaceutical industry. But here's the realities of the situation. If you go to the, any of the major news channels tonight and you listen to them, half the ads, half the ads are from the pharmaceutical industry. I'm not kidding. Well, they guess what? These crazy Who do you think drugs? owns the media? It's the pharma. Big pharma. Um, <laughs> you know? They, they hey, spend... Kim, Kim, uh, Kim, we need to get the pharmaceutical industry on our show so that we can... No, uh, because then they control what market. you can say. And they I spend two-thirds of their budget I on marketing, I think TV, TV commercials, magazine ads, newspaper ads. Um, kids, I'll take the money. <laughs> they, they hire ghostwriters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there they go. Yeah, that's that's the that's, best medicine there is. Stay home. That's our yeah. that's our advertisement. That's our that's, advertisement. That's the IBM <laughs> from IBM pharmacies, right? Yeah, right. IBM. Yeah. IBM I, I believe my, in medicine. Yeah. Ah, there you go. I believe in medicine. <laughs> You know, well, 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 when when Kim Kim and I were in our board, we were discussing this. I said, "Look, if we're going to put together a show on coronavirus, we need to invite doctors on the show because they know something about this." Instead, if you look at a lot of the media that discuss this, it's what I call the talking heads. They they talk about it all well, the time. Well, they know, just want they frenzy stuff. feed off of negative news, I know and that's that. how they make their money. Well, if it doesn't they, lead, it doesn't lead, and, and they uh, suck cool. people in like a like a soap opera. Oh, I got to see the next thing. And they'll say, oh, two thirds of Americans, you know, they're going to get the virus. And the next right. week it happened, you know, they want right. to, they want to suck you in with their negative yeah. media. See, see I, 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 I missed the immunology classes in the farm uh, and the pathology classes. I, I missed all those classes when, when I was in college because I became a lawyer and they don't have any of those classes in law school. So the thing is, I'm going, like, well, it'd be nice to not, have you, did, you didn't miss out on too much because in medical school, no. there's maybe one class on nutrition. So really, and medical school is designed to be, you got to be a specialist, right? Sure. You got the heart doctor, you got the brain right. doctor, yeah, cardiologist, yeah, neurologist. you got the yep. you know sure. gastroenterologist, yep. room. all the specialists. And so you only learn your specialty, so you don't learn how to get the body working together systemically as a whole. So yeah. you're you're really learning to treat patients in a sick state. So it's but it, it's not healthcare in the U.S. It's sick care. All right. Mm -hmm. And they don't learn how to get the body's immune system working. All right. Through nutrition, 
yeah. balancing your hormones, you know, natural therapies. Sure. I visited a patient a few months ago who had a stroke, and I recommended, you know, you should take these vitamins. He said, the nurse said, that's not allowed. You cannot give vitamins to a patient in the hospital. <laughs> but if it was a drug, by prescribed oh, yeah, by right, your primary course. care, yes, you can. Yeah, drugs, you, drugs you can, All right. And yeah. then we're finding out, you well, know, yeah, the well, president well, and senators are all invested in these pharmaceutical companies. So, of course, they're yeah, going to the conflict of interest is amazing. Right. Yeah. Of course, they're going to make the laws that we can't do certain things because they write the laws. And so yeah, right. it benefits their pocket. Yeah, I'm, 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 just, I'm just wondering, you know, why uh, there's now there's, it appears to me that the American medical system doesn't seem to be interested in what's happening in other parts of the world. You mean you mean there's a world outside America? Is that what you're trying to explain? That's what I'm trying to explain. Oh gosh! Well, well, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's right. exactly okay. what I'm trying to explain. Okay, you, 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 you got to come over here and understand this place. Okay, I, See, I've been to America. Okay, and, right, right, I've worked right, right. in American companies, so yeah, we, 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 we don't know. After me, we, we didn't know that. If you ask, if you have half the Americans, ask them. Can you please show me India on a map? And you gave them this big thing called a globe, right? Half of them would be stumbling around. India, where's that? Oh, here it is. I think Let it's me. down here. Right here. Here it is. Right down here. Is this India? It's pretty big. Oh, no. So, that's, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, that, so that's, what, hap that's what happens to all immigrants from India? I mean, <laughs> I had Dr. Yu talking about systems that don't work, but it looks like you need more H1Bs. Well, the th thing is, we have a lot of systems that are disparate. They don't work, and they're based on the Adam Smith invisible hand, okay? But see, the invisible <laughs> hand met the invisible virus, and the invisible virus is right now eating up the invisible hand, and that's the realities of what's going on here uh, because the thing is, we had nothing. We, we completely disbanded our, our how where are we going to handle a pan pandemic. Bill Gates came out with a blueprint. He goes, you know, I've read everything after a lot because he has nothing better to do. He made his hundred billion. Hey, I have a so question. In India, what do people think about Bill Gates? What's their opinion of him? Yeah, good question. Okay, uh, I, I, I haven't been in India for a long time, but maybe Ankit can answer. Yeah. So Bill Gates, I mean, you think Bill Gates is one of the, uh, I mean, richest person in the world, and he's very brainy, and he's. Uh, uh, he's built a Microsoft, so he has a lot of uh, things to uh, take in care uh, in terms of the philanthropy work. What is he doing? And people regard Bill Gates as a very gentle and kind human being. Yeah, really? because uh, he donated a lot of vaccines, vaccines to a lot of the children, like the polio vaccine. And India too. Yeah. The he problem did. is a lot of the a lot of the kids got adverse reactions. Like some kids died and didn't have good reaction to the vaccines and. I think a lot of uh, a lot of Indians complained about that. Um, do they yeah. really need a vaccine, you know, for polio, which really has been eradicated years ago? I'm just concerned yeah. that if these vaccines are rolled out, because he he's one of the biggest funders of the World Health Organization, but I'm concerned there might be a conflict of interest because he's so invested in the vaccine industry. We don't want him to roll out a vaccine for the supposed COVID virus that does more harm than good. That's my only concern about conflict of interest, you know. So, well, well, he's, he's actually done a lot of work for, for women in the, in the red light district. He's one of the pioneers. Bill Gates has done, uh, has done a lot of work for women in the red light district. Prostitutes in India, uh, even the government of India has uh, sort of washed the hands of this class of people. So he's done a lot. Bill and Melinda Gates have done a lot of work both in Calcutta, Mumbai, and Delhi, uh, um, where there are, you know, close to about three, four hundred thousand women who are just completely ignored by the government. And uh, that's just one of the projects that he's involved in. So he's respected. Uh, uh, very much, uh, I, I think, in India. Uh, yeah. Though I've been out of India for about maybe 20 odd years, but I have family there who have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, so that's an example of how Americans are helping other countries 
but it's not like the government is, right? It's private industry. And it's private industry is what's going to get about, get us out of this mess. You know, business owners helping each other, just like this podcast. Hey, you know, we're here to give um, unbiased information to business owners, healthcare workers, right? How to, how to survive this coronavirus by increasing your immune system, how to financially protect yourself. So that's the bottom line is, you know, people who don't have ulterior motives you know, to sell, you know, drugs or a vaccine to help people out of their own heart and not because there's a conflict of interest. You know, just like Kim was saying in the government, there's too many politicians who are on a board of directors of big pharma. Like even these FDA agents, they, when they leave the FDA, who hires them? Big pharma because they have all the inside connections. That's the um, same thing in the finance industry. It's the exactly. same thing. All the, all the guys responsible for the 2008 crisis, all hired by Barack Obama. You know, so oh, it's that, crazy. Yeah, that's that's wow. that's normal. In, it appears in America, you just it is normal. Well, well, I, uh, yeah, that, that's normal. Interlocking uh, corporate directors is normal. This this yeah, way, hey, come corporate on, corporate criminals. This, this, no, 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 right no. This way. They're the white collar, <laughs> white collar criminals. Yeah. Yeah. This this it's way it's you keep legal, right? It's hey, listen. This way you keep, keep the money in the family. You keep the money in the one percent family. Okay, so that's the reason you do it. Yeah, you, you know? keep it in the Bilderberg family. You know the yeah, Bergs. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So the thing is, there there's absolute reason for that. And 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 I'll tell you, they 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 did a All study on on mobility in the United States. Mobility here is very limited now. In other words, if if you are born in one class in the U.S., you stay in that class you can't move up uh, you don't move down you stay in it that's and, just uh, like india india they have a class system well we do too and that's uh, the why is, the wealth we, we, gap yeah it's huge. really like that there's no middle well, class anymore even in the u.s have a democracy yeah. where we can change our stars like in the night's tell where yeah, well, we the, thing is, the thing is as, as we well know and study i'll never be a so, princess okay <laughs> ha, 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 you have you have a uh, uh, what was that called? The electoral college that sort of just yeah. negates everybody's votes and uh, right, you know. But but but, but so, Rakesh, yeah. half of our assets are owned by one percent of the population. So if you went into a room with a hundred people, okay, you got to find that one person in that room, and he owns more than almost everybody in that room combined. Seriously, and that's the case that's in most problem. democracies. Yeah, it is. That's it, the case in well, most democracies. It is, okay. But here's the yeah. other reality. Half the people in the United States have no financial assets whatsoever. They have a zero net worth. So if you have 100 people in the room, half of them have nothing, zero. And in the last act that was passed by Congress, and here it is, the TARP Act, $700 billion bailout, okay? Because remember, this took place in 2008. I did lectures on this because I'm not like Dr. Yu. You can talk to him for free. You call me, you talk to me. As an attorney, I will send you a bill. Okay, and it's not going to be a small bill. Uh, <laughs> okay, not gonna, okay. That's two Seven hundred billion dollar bailout. Well, guess who got the seven hundred billion? Large companies and uh, large companies, large financial institutions like AIG. Who didn't get it? Everybody else out here. They didn't get Jack. Basically, they give you a little trinket and say, oh, we, we, we're giving you a two hundred and fifty dollar rebate. Uh, in the meantime, they give AIG. You know, 25 billion. Seriously, that's what happens usually here all the time. This was the first act I've ever seen where they're actually handing money out to just regular Joe. Wait a minute, they wrote the bill, but we, as we've heard from Doctor Yu and maybe some other people, they maybe it was just to look good, and they put all yeah, these little I'll, provisions. I'll, I'll, no, l l l l listen, listen, they're kind of stuck with this because remember we did a lecture yesterday on it. We're doing another one on the 22nd. Okay, and the SBA is trying to change the rules in the middle of the ball ball game. Okay, they're going to get such backlash from the small business owners because here's the reality: is also half of our population in the United States work for small businesses. Okay, as a united force, they're bigger than the big companies. That, that's the realities of it. 
they made their first offering to small businesses to help them. And now the SBA is trying to change the rules in the middle ballpark. Well, it's not, we're not going to give the money out in three days. And I'm trying to post the Senator letter, but because Senator, some of the senators are upset with how the SBA is administering this and not three days, maybe seven to 10. Oh, we're going to deny this claim because of X. Okay. And they may not be able to do that legally. And this is where you need lawyers, okay? Because uh, we have this thing called class action suits. Because if one person came to me and said, you know, the SBA isn't following the letter of the law, I go, well, I'll sue them. How much are we going to collect? 10000 Wait a minute, that's my legal bill. Okay, so the thing is, you have to bring a whole class together and file a class action. They don't know, but when you fill out that form, if you notice, it has a little provision there that if somebody yeah. helped you fill it out, and how much know, do you pay them, you have yeah. to... You have to say who they are and how much you paid them. Well, Nick's bill is ten thousand dollars to fill oh, no, out. I, 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 could not, I could not do that. They actually have a form. And Anyways, y'all, I got a, I got another podcast. I'll see y'all tomorrow then. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll All see right. you tomorrow, Doctor. You. Bye bye. Right, Thanks bye. for joining us.